friends, this is sports editor and host Austin Chastain along in the Zoom call with staff reporter Christian Boer. And welcome to Maroon and Bold and welcome to March. I get it, we're already in the middle of March, but it's also tournament season. Uh, The Mid-American Conference tournament is set for both the men and the women. Uh, We're just going to jump right into it. Um, But... Yeah, both both conference tournaments are set and ready to roll next week in Cleveland at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Before we get into it, Christian, how are uh, how are things with you, man? Um, actually, kind of able to see each other last week, and and now we're kind of back in the Zoom call. Um, but how are things going for you, my man? Yeah, they're going well, brother. They're I'm surviving. We're hanging in there, and. Uh... Looking forward to tournament season. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, right back at you. It uh, it's good. Uh, you know, I was able to hop in to uh, McGurk this week for the first time and for basketball and what feels like forever um, to go cover the men's team, uh, which lost. They they were down by as many as sixteen to Northern Illinois came back, tied it with a minute left, and then just ended up losing, which, you know, kind of spelled the whole season. We'll get into that in just a a little bit. But um, then Saturday, I was able to hop in uh, for the women's game with with Christian, and that was fun. I will tell you that it it both games were both games were fun. Both games um, were were good games and kind of able to. have that feeling of March, even with so few people in the stands. So it was good. Um, but yeah, the, the women's team came back from as many as 19 down to take a uh, much needed victory and, and uh, grab the number two seed in the conference tournament, which at the midway point of the season, I didn't, I didn't think would be possible. Honestly, I thought they were going to be somewhere four, five, maybe even six, but um, but yeah, big time, uh, big time clutch finish really, uh, with the double overtime win at ball state and then the win over the Huskies on Saturday, that definitely turned things around and, and got CMU, um, not only the number two seed, but Chip was playing with some confidence. What do you think, Christian? Yeah, they, they played really well yesterday after that, uh, tough first quarter. And um, we're able to put together, I would say, probably two and a half solid quarters of basketball. I think things kind of fell apart in the end there. That last two minutes, I think they committed maybe two or three turnovers. Uh, But at the end of the day, it was a good win for them, a good comeback win. And um, it allowed a couple of their seniors, Michaela Kelly and Maddie Waters, to kind of show out in their last time in McGurk. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that was... uh... Like I said, it was it was a it was a good game, and it was good to see, um, you know, CMU show some resilient resiliency. There's the word. Um, something that that we'd kind of talked about with with Coach Heather Osterly several times um, throughout the season, is just finding a way to win games when adversity kicks you in the teeth. Uh, like you said, Christian, and, you know, earlier in the season, I'm not sure if, if CMU would have found a way to win that game on Saturday. It, and and part of it, and, and Heather talked about it, that they just lacked confidence. And, and that's, you know, I want to say normal, but um, they just – that's abnormal for, for CMU really, but they, they, they lacked a confidence early in the season. So they couldn't really know that, Oh yeah, we're going to come back and we're going to win this game. Um, they were able to find a way to make a comeback and go win that game. And I think even so it, it, it's kind of funny how the bracket worked out. CMU is going to match up against Northern Illinois again um, in the quarterfinal at at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. 
but given the way that the game in DeKalb went, right, a huge blowout, I think 31-point win for, for the Huskies, where they hit, I think, what, 15 threes, something ridiculous. Um, and then given the way that, you know, the first half played out yesterday, and then the, se- the way the second half played out yesterday, there could be this this game on on Wednesday. Um, it's going to be the third game on Wednesday, so it'll be it's it's approximately thirty minutes after the second game. Game started eleven one thirty. Call it about what four o'clock. Call it about four o'clock when that game should start. Um, that'll be. I think it'll be, a, I mean, it's obviously going to be a great game. Both teams are pretty talented. But how do you see this particular game on Wednesday playing out, Christian? Well, the Chippewas are going to have to defend the perimeter because they know what they're going to get in Northern Illinois. And the first time they played them, uh, the Huskies couldn't miss from beyond the arc, and they racked up 100 points and left Central Michigan kind of in the dust. Now, the second time around, the Chippewas adjusted, and I think they defended the perimeter a lot better in the second half. So look for both squads to kind of make adjustments yet again. Obviously, uh, it's the rubber match. Each team's taken one in their two matchups so far. Uh, for Central Michigan, to me, the key, like I said, is defending the perimeter. And for Northern Illinois, I think the key has to be developing some sort of interior presence because that's an area where Central Michigan has struggled this year was defending down low. Jahari Smith struggles with fouls. Kira Bustle struggles with fouls. And at the end of the day, the Chippewas are only going to have eight players. So if you can go inside and attack and get some of those players in foul trouble, then then Central Michigan is going to be in a tough spot. So uh, those are my keys. And whichever team executes better is going to have a better chance of moving on and continuing their season. Yeah, and that 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 piece with with bustle, that's something that that Heather talked about not not extensively, but she talked about it a little bit after Saturday's game. Um uh, that they need to find a way. She kept saying that the coaching staff needs to find a way to get Bustle and Maddie Waters playing both both playing well at the same time because when when you have that inside outside presence that that spot up shooting presence that that Waters has and the inside outside capability that Bustle has, I mean, you're talking about a lethal team right there. I mean, you're you're talking about a, a similar buzzsaw to what CMU hit at Northern Illinois. Um, but you also kind of have to think about it as okay, you need you need all eight players to play well it obviously you can't and i know that sounds really really dumb as i say it it it, it really does i know um but you definitely i mean you need your leaders you know michaela kelly molly davis you need your guards to play well um you really need all five stars to play well and not foul out you know i mean if you foul out with like a you know less than a minute left fine you know i get it the long game 40 minute game five fouls and i get it um but yeah if you can stay out of foul trouble really for the for the majority of the game and and keep yourself um you know available like you said like christian said they're gonna only have eight players available due to uh covid contact tracing um you know the, the freshmen the three freshmen that have shown some ability will won't, won't be um won't be available. I don't believe they'll be making the trip. I don't think they made the trip to Ball State, so I would have. You would think that they would not be making the trip to Cleveland. We don't know. Again, that's just kind of a. Um, we'll, we'll call it a guess, <laughs> um, just based off of the Ball State trip on last Wednesday. Going into well, this comes out on Tuesday, thankfully. Um, so tomorrow on Wednesday, right? March 10th. Um, oh, man. You know, there's kind of a, a lot to unpack with 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 the women's team because I feel like 
I, I want to stop short of saying they're, they've been hit or miss, like so inconsistent this year. But at the same time, you know, you, you, you look at the way the schedule is kind of played out. I mean, you have a three game winning streak and then you have a four game winning streak, three game losing streak, three game winning streak, a stretch where you win six out of seven. And then you you lose two to teams in Ohio. You have a game canceled because of COVID. That's the that was the first cancellation against Eastern Michigan. Um, you beat Ball State in double OT. You come from behind to beat Northern Illinois. So again, it's not hit or miss, but it the. I think the the way the way this game plays out against NIU in the quarterfinal. See, I, I you know my my prediction would be CMU would advance, would win, and and move on. But it depends on which team shows up. Is it going to be the the Michaela Kelly show, and it's literally just Michaela Kelly, or is, okay, the 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 backcourt show where. Michaela Kelly and Molly Davis just go off for a combined 50. And then those are the only two in, in double figures. You you get, you can't have that in, in a, in a tournament setting, even if you get, you know, six or seven out of, you know, the other seven, six players, math, the other six players, I mean, you, you just can't have that. Now, if you have, you know, I guess an extended backcourt show with, with Maddie Waters coming in, dropping 15 like she did on Saturday. You have Bustle with a double-double. You have Smith adding, you know, eight or nine points. The The way CMU comes out and plays, the way its its leaders come out and score – come out and and, pl- and play the way they know how to. They've obviously had a lot of success. Obviously, it's a weird season this year. <laughs> you don't need to hear that from me. <clears throat> but if you're CMU, how confident are you in your ability to go out and win this game, this quarterfinal on, on Wednesday? I think you're pretty confident. Um, you know, you're coming off a pretty good effort uh, in, the, in the second half. You, I think they kind of figured out what Northern Illinois was trying to do and slowed them down. So anytime you're able to climb out of, a, I think it was a 19 point deficit at one point um, in the first half on Saturday. So anytime you're able to come back from a deficit like that and then essentially just dominate the rest of the way, I know it ended up being a six or a six point game, but still that means that the Chippewas outscored NIU by 25 after um, the Huskies took that 19 point lead. So I think there's a lot of confidence there. And I think that really bustles the missing piece because, you know, she's been so quiet offensively recently. And so to be able to get her going would be huge. Um, also, one thing I'm looking out for is is Molly Davis, who who kind of struggled when they went to Cleveland last year. Um, I think she ended up with nine points, uh, had a tough day shooting the ball. So if she's able to get going, um, she's a big-time player, and I think that this is a stage where she can come out there and show out. Um, and, you know, if she's able to get going, and Michaela Kelly's obviously going to be Michaela Kelly. So uh, just the depth and the balance that they've had – in some key games this season, you know, I looked to the Buffalo game. I looked to the first game at Ohio um, as, as examples of what this team can be. So um, I certainly think there's a lot of confidence to be had out there. It's just a matter of going out and getting it done. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, there, there's a rightful confidence, I think. Um, I don't know. I think I think I think CMU is going to go out and and do well. I think it'll be a, a good game. Obviously, I just predicted that they're going to win, so so you can you know take that for what it is. But um, like you said, the way that they've been playing the last 
in, in this last week. I mean, they obviously had the cancellation against EMU, but even the the Toledo game, I mean, it was close. You know, kind of fell, took a lead, fell behind, um, and then cancellation against EMU, and then and then two gritty wins. Yeah, I, I mean. You got to take it one game at a time, but I could, I could, I mean, I could see a scenario. Not that they're in Cleveland. We keep saying like, oh, there's not a way they don't get to Cleveland. Okay, they're there. But now that they're there, I mean, I see a scenario. I see three different scenarios. Um, they maybe a bunch of more different scenarios. I don't know, but I see one where they they lose on Wednesday. NIU just comes out and and takes care of business. Shoots well from outside. Chippewas can't defend it. Can't score to keep up. I see CMU winning on Wednesday. They find a way to defend the outside and and score well enough to enough to win. Um, you know, you, I could see them losing in the semifinal. I could see them losing in the championship. I could see them winning the championship. You know what I mean? Like there's there's all kinds of all kinds of different scenarios that I could see happen with, with CMU in Cleveland. So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to predict beyond this first. Oh, you, know, you know what? I should, I really should. I think they're going to lose in the championship game. I think that's going to be the scenario that, that plays out. I don't know. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with CMU is going to lose in the championship game. Um, I think they get there and something, you know, the luck just runs out or just the legs run out or something. But I, I think they get there. I think it's a close game. I think it's a good game, but I think they end up end up second in the MAC. Um with the uh, with the loss in the championship game, you know, um, looking kind of down the road, I'm gonna go on the limit. I'm gonna say they win on Wednesday, and then they lose to Ohio in the second round. I think that the Bobcats were able to kind of dominate them wire to wire when they came into McGurk, and then Central Michigan made a late rally with their defense. But I think that. Um, kind of taking a little more stock into the first three and really a half quarters of that game. I think Ohio kind of had their way with them. So um, I think they'll get a win, um, but they'll lose, they'll bow out in the semifinals. Fair enough. I like it. Um, I, I like it. Good prediction. Um, did want to, you know, talk about the men's team for a minute. Uh you know that that like I said, that game on Friday was was close. They you know they they easily could have won it. I mean they probably should have. Um, I don't know. I I know a lot of people are calling for Keno's job. You also have to think about you know a half million dollar buyout of his contract. I think. I'll, I'll get to the keynote talk in a second, but the 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 way that CMU played in the last couple of games, and again, I know there's some a lot of a lot of losses, um, but you have you have the buzzer beater win against Toledo, which ended up winning the MAC backwards. I guess you know you Toledo went into McGurk, lost to CMU, but had I think Bowling Green loot not not Bowling Green. Uh, I forget. I forget who's the two seed, but ended up winning. Ended up winning the MAC um, anyway, but didn't win the game to celebrate on CMU's home floor. So take that for what it is. But um, I think I think there's a lot of talent with the men's team. I think they just need some time to really gel together, simply because. They didn't get an off season to actually practice and gel 
Uh, I mean, they did for like just a couple of weeks, which you, you just can't. You you can't you know form a relationship like that. Um, but I think you saw it you know form and develop throughout the throughout the season. And I think you know towards the end of the season, I think the relationship is there, the gelling is there. They just need more time, I think, to really piece it together. That team could be dangerous next year. Who knows? Um, you know, I I think we talked about it with our uh, Valentine's Day episode, uh, you know, the swiping through maroon and bold. If you haven't listened to that, go check it out. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, you know, you have um, – I think CMU could make make it to Cleveland next year, but they they gonna they're gonna need that off season a lot of work. They're gonna have to work super hard, um, you know, from now till November when the season starts, assumingly, um, to make it back there. So I don't know. Uh, what what are your some of your just quick thoughts on the on the medicine, Christian? No, I agree. There's a lot of potential and talent there. It's just a matter of getting that offseason to gel together. And I think that you saw at points what this team can be. Um, looking at that, Jernil and Andre Polk had a bunch of points. Um, Mikel Murray was steady. You know, he was about 20 and 10 a game. It felt like towards the towards the end of the year. And then you get um, the point guard situation, situation Excuse me, figured out with Devontae Lane and um, uh, P.J. Mitchell and Rashad Weekly McDaniels. So a lot of potential there. And um, But – like you said, they need the off season. They're going to have to uh, to put some of the pieces together, and it'll be very interesting to see what they do in terms of recruiting uh, this year. Because, you know, at least on paper, you expect that whole roster to come back, and uh, uh, but at the same time, you want to try and get an extra body, new face in there too. Uh, that way, you don't. Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you got to be able to develop some talent and add some guys. So. Um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what goes down there. And uh, like you said, I don't think anybody needs to be calling for Kino's job. It's a tough year. He's got a big buyout too. So um, I I see this same exact team almost all the way down to the to the same guys coaching, maybe even the same student managers uh, next year. Yeah, I mean it's 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 really easy to you know sit sit you know. It's really, really easy to go out somewhere and say, oh, yeah, fire Kino. I get it. It's frustrating. Um, you know, uh, you know, when before working as a as a reporter, you know, I, I had my favorite teams growing up and I was always, please fire this coach. After after a you know, embarrassing loss to a team that you really shouldn't have. Um, you know, there's, you know, it, it happens. I get it. But like Christian said, I mean, imagine coaching in a, in a global pandemic, you know, you have to worry about, not only do you have to worry about the basketball part of it, you have to worry about keeping your guys safe. You have to worry about, you know, the other teams being safe worry about scheduling you have to worry about um, all of it you know I, i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and, and defend Keno because i mean look that's you know you go what seven and 16 three and 13 in the mac that's that that's that's a, let's face it that's that's a bad record okay i get it his his record at cmu isn't isn't any good i get it um you know, there's. I I understand the frustration that that fans have that that you fans have. I get it. Trust me. But at the same time, you know, university is really struggling for cash. I'm I'm gonna I'm that's the way we're gonna go. Like Christian said, I mean, it's a half million or yeah, half million dollar buyout. I think next year it goes down just a little bit. Um, but at this, you know, regardless, there's no way that CMU is going to let Kino go and, and buy out of that contract because they just don't have the money. I mean, I know you can pay it off over time or whatever, 
but at the same time, like it, it just, I, I don't know if there's a way you can do it. I, I just don't. And the, the more people kind of think about it, like that's all, that's a lot of cash, even just, you know, even over a couple of years, that's still a lot of cash for CMU to, to throw out there. I get it. $32 million building for the football stadium. I get it. I get all of it. Trust me. I understand, but you just have to think about it. Okay. We're, you know, you're in a global pandemic and that would mean you have to go find a new coach and you have to pay that new coach as well. So the financial piece of it, I think, I think Keno's going to stick around for one more year. Um, someone, someone asked me on Twitter, how hot is his seat right now? I mean, it's gotta be, you know, on fire. <laughs> Let, let's, let's, you know, and then you can use the expression of lighting a fighter under his ass, <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, I, I I do think Keno seat's going to be hot next year, um, like extremely hot. So that's one thing you know for for him to think about is I would think I'm not telling him how to think, but that's one thing to kind of have in the in the back of the mind is I'm coaching for my job now, and I think I think the guys if if they're you know fans of Keno they'll play for him. And I think they are. Um, but I, I think that those guys would go out and play for him and help him keep his job pretty much. So there's my little rant on, on Keno Davis and the situation that the men's team has been presented with Christian. Um, Look, I I know there's some some other sports going on, but I'm not I'm not sure. Is there anything else um, that you that you have that you wanted to kind of touch on, talk about, think about? No, no, man. I think we did a good job covering it. Cool. I do too. I do too. I like Maroon and Bold. This is fun. This is always fun for 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 me personally. I know I know Christian has fun with it, but. It's always a lot of fun. Come on here, talk about CMU sports. So, yeah, like I said, it's just a good time. That's what you. That's what you got to do when you're in college. You just got to have fun, right? So, I, I definitely am having fun. Um, I hope you guys are having fun. I hope you know. Obviously, like I always say, I hope we can get more, even more fans into McGurk and Kelly Shorts and Tennyson and. Margo Yonker Stadium. Hopefully, we can get more fans in, in those facilities, um, so we can see 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 all of you guys out 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 in the community. That's I miss that. That's like I said last week. Yeah, you know, last week. Yeah, I miss it. I miss seeing you guys. I miss seeing the six man band, all of it. So, um, with that, I think, like Christian said, we just about covered it i think we're just about done um you can follow along with christian and myself for all of your mac tournament coverage um follow christian seaboer underscore follow me chastain aj follow all of our wonderful cm life reporters um at cm life on twitter central michigan life on facebook instagram youtube you can find our sports twitter cm life sports and then follow us as always on cm-life.com for all of our your Chippewa basketball coverage, Chippewa sports coverage, and coverage throughout the Central Michigan and Mount Pleasant community. That just about wraps it up. So for our podcast editor, Ben Ackley, for Christian, I am Austin. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching, for listening. Cannot tell you how much I appreciate it, how much Christian appreciates it, how much appreciates it how much cm life appreciates it so with that we will talk to you again next week when we meet again